Okay, between videos I changed uh, the, the backdrop here of my uh, screen and something that you, I will show you how to do in just a few videos, but I wanted to do this to draw out a point. Um, in this video we want to talk a little bit about this concept of absolute motion. And again, that's the idea of moving to an absolute place regardless of where the cat is to start with. And so in order to really talk about absolute motion, we have to talk a little bit about the coordinate system and the directional system in Scratch. And I actually sort of hinted that you should pay attention to this when I set up the task. Um, you may remember that when we very first open a, a, a program in Scratch, when we click on the Create tab and we get this brand new program up, Scratch Cat starts in the very middle of the screen uh, pointing to the right, like he is right now. And what you may have noticed as you experimented with these blocks, in particular as you experimented with things like Go To and Glide, is that there's an underlying coordinate system there. And for those of you with a little, well, basically, even if you don't have formal mathematical training, you all should remember this from high school, this uses the standard coordinate system. And that is, that in the very beginning, the cat is in the middle of the stage, which is 0, 0. And again, I added this backdrop to the stage so you can see this information about the stage. 0, 0 is the middle of the stage. Remember that X runs left and right, and so as you move the cat to different spots on the stage, we go from negative 240, you can see that over here, negative 240 is the far left-hand side, and positive 240 is the far right-hand side. So in other words, our stage in Scratch is 481 it seems weird, but it's 481 pixels across. The 81st is the zero, right? And it's 361 up and down, because we go from negative 180 to positive 180. That can't be changed. Every program since the very beginning days of Scratch was built on a stage that was 481 by 361. Um, from now on, I'm just going to say 480 by 360, and we'll all just know that's a lie. It's actually 481 by 361, uh, but but 480 by 360, right? And we And we do this coordinate system of X and Y. And so if I wanted to move my cat to the upper left-hand corner, I mean, one of the ways I could have done that was to simply drag out this go-to block and say, look, I know that this upper left-hand corner is a Y value of about negative 200, uh, sorry, sorry, an X value of about negative 200 and a Y value of 150 maybe, not 1500, 150. And if I click on it, the cat goes to the upper left-hand corner. And some of you may be thinking about this going, man, my kids don't know coordinate systems. They don't understand how all that works. They're not going to be able to figure that out. Here's the thing I'll tell you. It really doesn't matter for most programs because, first of all, they're going to figure it out a little bit just by experimentation. But I want you to notice something. As I move this cat around on the stage here and move him to different places, right, a couple of things change. First of all, as I move the cat around, notice these numbers right here. Right? Notice that I'm in the cat sprite, and this says that right now the cat is at 135, negative 91. And if I move him way over here, now he's at negative 176, negative 102. Right? This tells me right here exactly where the cat is. And so even your second graders or third graders who don't understand coordinate systems can figure all of that out by simply doing sort of trial and error. I want the cat here. What is that? That's negative 162 and a positive 110. The other thing I'll point out to you is that also when I do that, not only does it change here, but it changes over here in the go to block. Right? So right now it says go to 115, negative 36. But if I move the cat to the upper left hand corner, boom, negative 189, 121. That's the upper left hand corner. And so I. I could simply tell the cat, I want to move to that location. And no matter where the cat starts on the screen, when I press the green flag, he's going to jump to the upper left-hand corner, that absolute coordinate system. Right? And so that's pretty cool, and it, it makes life really, really easy uh, as we 
want to move cats, the cat around with your students who may not be the strongest at math, it really doesn't matter. This will help them figure all of that out, that as they move the cat around, these numbers change automatically over in the menu system, and so they can use that in their code. Okay. So that's part of how we get to this idea of absolute motion. The question then is how do we put absolute motion and relative motion together? Right? What happens if I really do for some reason want to do this turn 55 degrees, move 200 steps, but I always want to make sure that the cat starts in the middle in the right location? Well, the way we do that is we take advantage of that whole idea of places everybody. right? This two block piece of code worked when Scratchy Cat started in the middle of the stage and when he started pointing straight up. And so the idea is that I might tell Scratchy Cat that when the green flag is pressed, the first thing I want him to do is to go to his starting location. I want to go to X0, Y0. And then I want him to point straight up. And so here's the other little bit of math mathematics we have to talk about when it comes to absolute and relative motion. And that's the idea of the direction that Scratchy Cat is pointing. Right? Let me pull this over so we can really see it well. Okay, So we want to point in direction 90. Well, that's what he's directed now. And you can see that right now. Cat is basically at the middle of the stage, right, at x3, y negative 2. And he's pointed in direction 90, which when I click on that, you'll see that I get this little clock face, which tells me that I want him to point in direction 90. And it's kind of cool that I can actually grab this arrow and I can spin him so that he's pointing in whatever direction I want him spinning. And I can do that here or I can do that from the point in direction. I can say, I want the cat to point straight up, which turns out to be direction zero. And so what I could do is to say, look, when the green flag is pressed, I want you first to do places everybody. I want you to go to zero, zero, and point straight up. Right? Then when that's done, and by the way, let me, I'm going to add one more block here. I'm going to go, go to the control menu, and I'm going to say wait one second so we can see that happen. Then I want you to turn 55 degrees counterclockwise and move 200 steps. You're in the upper right-hand corner. Right? So there we go. He moved to the upper left-hand corner. Sorry, the upper left-hand corner, right? So let me do this again. Press the green flag, places everybody, wait one second, and then jump to the upper right-hand corner. Left-hand corner, I keep saying right-hand corner. Let's talk about this direction for just a little bit, because again, for those of you who are mathematically inclined, this is not at all the way uh, high school math with the coordinate system works, right? When we talk about Cartesian coordinates, we normally talk about straight right as being zero, and then as you kind of work your way up, this was uh, half pi, and you know it was, it was 90 degrees, and then as you kept going, it became 180 degrees, and it kept going to 270, and there was this whole thing about you know zero to 90 to 180, and we don't follow that here. Scratch doesn't follow that in part because. There's, no, there's maybe sensible reason for that system of zero being straight to the left or to the right and 90 being straight up and 180 being backwards to the left. But And, and that may make sense to advanced mathematicians. It's not going to make sense to a second or a third grader. And so the idea is really simple here. Zero, straight up. As you come down, positive numbers are on the right. So if I want to go kind of in an angle, that's positive 45, positive 90, 135, 180, right? All positive numbers here. And if I come over to the left, you'll see that they're the negative versions of those, right? The exact same numbers working to negative 45, negative 90, negative 135 down to, uh, well, I could, I could actually put in negative 180, but it's just also the same as positive 180. I'll say the same thing here I said about the coordinate system mathematically. Your students don't have to actually understand this anymore. They simply have to say, look, I want the cat to point in that direction. The fact that's 135 degrees is filled in automatically by scratch. The students don't have to worry about it. And so you can say, my places everybody is, go to the center of the stage, point in direction zero, wait one second, right, and then action. I want to start my show and I want to turn 55 degrees to the counterclockwise, to the left, and move 200 steps. And now, no matter where this cat is, no matter what happens, when the play starts, 
when I say places everybody, right, the first thing that he does is go to the middle and point up. And that is the idea of places everybody. And you're going to hear me use that idea a lot from now on in the course. The idea of every single program should always start with a places everybody. Typically an absolute motion, an absolute direction reset. We go to a specific place and we point in a specific direction. And then after that, it doesn't matter whether we use absolute or relative motion anymore because we know that the program at least always starts in the same situation. Okay? 